హలో వెల్కమ్ టు ఐఏఎస్ బాబా సో దిస్ ఇస్ ఇంద్ర కుమార్ అండ్ ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ ద మెయిన్స్ ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీ త్రీ ఇంటర్నల్ సెక్యూరిటీ పేపర్ ఐ హోప్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ హ్యావ్ సీన్ ద పేపర్ జిఎస్ త్రీ అండ్ వెన్ ఇట్ కమ్స్ టు ఇంటర్నల్ సెక్యూరిటీ జనరలీ ద క్వశ్చన్స్ ఆర్ మోస్ట్లీ రెలవెంట్ టు కరెంట్ అఫేర్స్ బికాస్ ఆల్వేస్ వెన్ అ క్వశ్చన్ ఇస్ ఆస్ట్ ఎస్పెషలీ ఇన్ జిఎస్ టూ అండ్ జిఎస్ త్రీ దేర్ ఈస్ ఆల్వేస్ సమ్ సార్ట్ ఆఫ్ కనెక్షన్ యూ క్యాన్ ఫైండ్ ఎస్టాబ్లిష్ బిట్వీన్ ద స్టాటిక్ పార్ట్ అండ్ అస్ వెల్ అస్ ద కరెంట్ అఫేర్స్ పార్ట్ అండ్ నౌ ఐ కెన్ సీ ఆల్మోస్ట్ దెర్ హ్యావ్ బీన్ డైరెక్ట్ క్వశ్చన్స్ ఆల్సో వెన్ ఇట్ కమ్స్ టు కరెంట్ అఫేర్స్ బట్ స్టిల్ ఇర్ రెస్పెక్టివ్ ఆఫ్ యువర్ కరెంట్ అఫేర్స్ లీని అనో దట్ ద డిసిప్లిన్ ఇస్ గెటింగ్ మోర్ connected to current affairs but still you have to be really really thorough with the static because uh, the only in current affairs perspective you will just give examples but it always has the foundation which is an ongoing which is, has been a static part only so okay so don't entirely depend on uh, your current affairs part for your internal security preparation which i would always suggest the students to go throughwards your static notes also before you go to this exam and uh, when it comes to the overall trend of internal internal security paper it's it's a recent paper and uh, you know what uh, in this paper uh, the questions have always been uh, uh average average four questions will be definitely asked and uh, and 50 mark can be guaranteed and it's a very very minimal very minimal portions it doesn't take uh, hardly it will take four or five days for you to complete the entire internal security uh, and, and and the rest it uh, directly depends upon how long you write the answers because when it comes to paper like internal security environment these type of and science and tech the entire gs3 paper you can't write a very generic answer because every discipline has its own jargons has is as its own keywords unless until those are getting reflected in your answers it is uh, uh, even though if you would have written some good uh, content also without keywords and without the uh, terminologies you would find uh, you know your answers are not, not getting improved your marks might not improve so uh, when it comes to this paper obviously you should be able to know the overall issues which is going in and around as well as uh, the static part and also concentrate on your keywords and your your terminologies with respect to that paper so yes so before uh, too much uh, into generic discussions we will definitely jump into the questions uh, directly to the questions okay so yes the first question is winning the hearts and minds in terrorism affected areas is an essential step in restoring the trust of the population okay so this what this question has two components and the second component is discuss the measures adopted by the government in this respect as a part of the conflict resolution in jammu and kashmir so this question has two parts one is winning the hearts and minds of in terrorism affected area is a area essential so this is a substantiative statement for the second second is the main question the first is the answer that it is just a statement is this substantiating but still we should be able to as i said uh, i would like to give you a small idea whenever there is such a substantive statement is given it is always better uh, to to write some statement defining that statement or maybe a, subs- a fact or a data to so that uh, the examiner understands that you have gra- asked for the question properly otherwise what happens is uh, there is a sort of you know whenever you started with a very traditional approach then it becomes a little more uh, uh, maybe the examiner will get a confusion okay so in this case you can definitely try to put an argument which is more substantiating the first argument then we will go to the explanation part how you can address this questions so what is winning the hearts and minds see when uh, it is uh, winning the hearts and minds is a terrorism strategy okay it is employed by the government agencies uh, to gain the trust uh, the the safety the as well as uh, uh, within the populations which 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 they are interacting because whenever the, in the terrorism affected areas there is a sense of mistrust which will develop even because the people loses their trust with the governing institutions itself 
still so in this process the government now has to make some confident milding measures has to and it has to uh, engage in a multi pronged approach so that uh, these type of uh, uh, these type of issues does not arise and the public does not uh, you know get uh, disaffectionate or maybe the sense of mistrust will not go with the government itself because once the government uh, loses trust from its people then there will be no credibility for such institutions let, let it be even the uh, security forces so all these things has a major internal security threat so this is why winning uh, the minds and hearts of people is considered a primary strategy whenever we are dealing with such uh, uh, you know uh, such sensitive areas so now we'll see uh, before this now we'll see the second part of questions is what are the measures adopted by government in the respect as a part of conflict resolution in jammu and jammu and kashmir so okay uh, since this uh, this is the uh, part main question is the first part also we need to have a little bit background because it is always uh, you know it's a good idea for uh, you to give a background about the in issues which has happened there so that it uh, it makes the examiner uh, understand that okay you know the issues and now you have also given you the given the solutions which the government has taken okay so when it comes to jammu and kashmir we know there are some two two issues okay when it comes to historical reasons one and second is after integration which is integration means integrating that is after the cancellation of article 370 okay there will be two issues which have been uh, plaguing uh, jammu and kashmir now we'll see a general uh, you know like a opinion about all these things then we will go to the uh, the actual issues actual steps taken by the government in this regard the first is we will go for the political instability political in stability see jammu and kashmir has been always a region of political instability and the political parties and also there used to be so many switchovers there used to be so many defections and all these things what happens is there is no stable government in this region so this has always left the region so backward so this political instability is one of the historical reasons why uh, government uh, why the jammu and kashmir has always been one of the backward region in the in the entire country then we will go to the human right issues human rights issues see as everyone know it's a uh, one of our major adversary which is pakistan it is a state which is bordering pakistan and there is also this pakistan occupied kashmir due to this this counter uh, you know counter border uh, terrorism and due to this insurgencies and also this uh, sort of uh, counter i mean this border terrorism and these uh, these type of things what happens is uh, there is that needs to be a presence of always security agents in these areas so due to this uh, infiltration what happens is the presence of uh, security agencies especially when they come into contact with certain civilians there is always some sort of uh, you know uh, clash between them and obviously when the security agents are present there will be some sort of uh, you know human errors happening there so it has been an always an area where uh, which has been uh, human right violations have always been uh, highlighted and also been uh, faced by the local populations which again uh, you know it, uh, it it has been a historical reason there which is again why uh, the sections have lost uh, some kind of trust due to the actions of you obviously not the entire uh, security forces but still uh, some remote incidents often that will inflate into a more sensitive issue then we will speak about the economic when we speak about economic development in country but in this region there is always an economic underdevelopment so why this economic underdevelopment is because infrastructure no funding in infrastructure then investment lack of investment 
then because of the land use policies which is uh, which is which was available at the local uh, uh, state level politics and policies uh, there was no investment and infrastructure development also and the article 370 which had its own uh, positives for them perspective but as a whole holistic perspective if you see uh, it led to the economic under development for this region as a whole then we will uh, speak about economic under development then we will speak about the social aspects when it comes to the youth when it comes to women when it comes to education child education see all these regions was was really backed and historically these regions have little uh, improved on this areas then we will speak about minority marginalization minority marginalization see minority marginalization is one of the major major uh, see uh, whenever uh, you you can find if you go across uh, and speak to a kashmiri they will always speak about uh, renting out uh, uh, even a small house across india is really a problem for us because everyone uh, try to treat us some way or this way this type of uh, this is not uh, done everywhere but still some remote areas again uh, this will create a sense of insecurity uh, some sense of mistrust again within from the people of kashmir uh, for the entire uh, about the entire nation in itself so this minority mar marginalization is also one of the major issues and when it comes to this political instability there was also one more point see the in uh, lack of political participation also has been one of the major issues if you speak about uh, there the political turn the I mean the voter turnouts in jammu and kashmir historically it has been very low which has been hampering the process because only if democracy uh, tries to set in there can be some meaningful development so the voter turnouts will be low and uh, there will be security issues this uh, due to security issues the voter turnouts will be low again there will be mass boycotts of elections so all these things has led to devil uh, 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 a long term effect on the jammu and kashmir society okay then after the integration what happened was that is after 370 abrogation of article 370 what happens was there was there is still some sort of you know complete blackout of uh, communication which is again hampering the process of development but of, of course that is due to the security issues but still there is this and there is obviously you are seeing a con continuing militancy in this region in kashmir it's still it's there of course security issues are still going on after pulwama and all those incidents right so continuing mil militancy is again hampering the process again then we we can speak about the presence of afspa and other again the military agencies are really is is really again uh, developing a sense of mistrust within the people so these things are one of the major reasons why uh, winning the heart and minds of jammu and kashmir is really important so in this process you can you don't need to mention everything but i have discussed everything here so that you can get a background idea about the issues which is being present in jammu and kashmir society now we will speak about what all the government steps which has been taken when it comes to uh winning the hearts and minds of the people of jammu and kashmir let's say confidence building measures okay we can put it as confidence building measure confidence or confidence building building measures so what we can do is instead of uh, instead of going generic about this we can directly we can uh, demarcate these topics into certain sub topics so that it will be more easier for us say for example under the social aspects social aspects what are the measures taken by government of india first is developmental perspective from the develop, develop not only conflicting measures mean con, you know, conflict building measures means does not mean see the question is i'll give you the question so once more this conflict question as reject as measures adopted by government in this reject respect as a part of conflict resolution in kashmir see conflict resolution does not mean only uh, the um 
conflict resolution does not only mean that it is it is it is leading to only security measures it also means it also means building trust in society also okay it's a holistic multi pronged approach okay so when it comes to social aspect apart from conflict resolution security which we will come ahead social aspects we speak about the sarva shiksha abhiyan sarva shiksha abhiyan compulsory education up to age of 14 is implemented then through saubhagya scheme we have electrified all we are trying to electrify all the households in kashmir then sarva shiksha abhiyan then for education beti bachcho beti padho beti bachcho beti padhao okay this scheme has been implemented for the women girls education especially this has been implemented in jammu and kashmir then apart from that project ummeed is there project ummeed for the women empowerment you know for the women empowerment of jammu and kashmir so these are the major uh, broad uh, issues which have been brought under the social aspects when it comes to confidence and conflict building measures okay next we will speak about economic aspects see when it comes to uh, economic aspects we have uh, some broad sub topics also but uh, in a in a broader in a normal perspective what i would say is in economic perspective there has been skill development mission for youth right skill development missions for youth then pm development assistance scheme which has given 80000 80000 crores for the development of jammu and kashmir then industrial development scheme industrial development scheme to develop industries in that region in jammu and kashmir region apart from that infrastructure see infrastructure in kashmir has always been given larger importance say for example the zojila tunnel zojila tunnel right connecting kashmir and ladakh then the baramulla baramulla shrinagar baramulla shrinagar railway link railway link and you know the irrigation projects right irrigation projects in ravi in bias sorry not bias ravi and Ch- chenani nursery tunnel is there chenani nursery tunnel right and other irrigation channels which is in jammu and kashmir in the indus basins also we have numerous such irrigation projects which is again one of the important conflict uh, infl- important confidence building measure which has been done there in jammu and kashmir after that for the youth we will speak about youth youth is there is a project called project sadhana project sadhana sadhana so this where the army army is trying to protect the i mean uh, trying to uh, build trust from the youth right uh, project sadbana is there then we have uh, uh, majid khan who was a football player uh, elit laskar taiba who joined who just came and surrendered with the majid khan majid khan surrendered with the army and he was uh, written off all the uh, cases against him and he was given a free hand so that he can continue his football so all these things have been one of the again uh, building that uh, trust in the people g- reducing conflict among the crowd and also in youth we have the kelo kelo 94 kelo india 94 centers 
नाइन्टी फोर सेंटर्स हैव बीन सेटअप इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर अलोन दीज थिंग्स आर लाइक यू नो एज एज अट ऑफ डिस्ट्रैक्शन फॉर यूथ हु आर गेटिंग फ्रस्ट्रेटेड इन इन बिटवीन दिस ऑल दिस सिक्योरिटी एंड ऑल दिस इश्यूज दिस इज वन ऑफ द मेजर थिंग्स विच हैव बीन टेकन फॉर अंडर द यूथ एंड इकोनॉमिक एस्पेक्ट्स वेन इट कम्स टू जम्मू एंड कश्मीर देन वी विल स्पीक अबाउट then we will speak about infrastructure again we have the aims we have iits we have all these all these projects are again coming under um, coming under uh, government of india project for the development of jammu and kashmir region now we will speak about the security aspect security aspect see there is this modernization of police force which is being done so that to curb modernization of police force to curb the insurgencies in and also increase the intelligence to engage with the internal uh, to central uh, intelligence forces to make a secure environment in that region then after permanent peace rajnath singh has said after permanent peace is being established in kashmir afspa will be afspa afspa will be permanently removed from kashmir which is again one of the uh, very very big conflict resolution statement which has been given by the minister rajnath singh then police force has been modernized then 98 we have done so apart from this there are some uh, peace uh, initiatives which have been taken with the political parties right we have increased the assembly constituencies up to 90 assembly constituency so that they will get greater representation in their assembly and conversion and it is jammu and kashmir is about to be converted to as a state also and ladakh ladakh will be maintained as a ut okay so that is again uh, with state they will get more autonomy to conduct their own affairs this is also one of the promising conflict resolution strategy which we have implemented apart from that 83 to 90 yes this things is we have it earlier it was 83 now it is 90 then the state can have more autonomy when it comes to police and land also right this can also be given more priority so all these aspects what happens uh, we have discussed so many aspects when it comes to jammu and kashmir and the conflict resolution steps and we have sp- spoken not only in security angle as a conflict resolution but as a whole to address the whole entire jammu and kashmir society's needs aspirations uh, when it comes to uh, they are conducting their own uh, autonomy as well as uh, being inside the integ- in being inside the integral part of india so these are the steps so these can be summarized and give as one uh, kind of ca- positive conclusion that definitely yes all these things are definitely taking inroads into kashmir uh, so this will definitely lead to the better uh, betterment of the society as a betterment of kashmir society as a whole so okay so this will be the first question's answer okay now we'll go for the second question asked in the internal security so we will go for the second question the second question is the use of unmanned aerial vehicle by our adversaries adversaries means our enemies across the borders to ferry arms ammunitions drugs etc is a serious threat to the internal security comment on the measures being taken to tackle this threat so this is a 10 mark questions so again this is a direct question there is not much of twist where it has two uh, statements as we as usual as the first uh, question we have seen this question also what we have to do is we have to first take this questions into two sta- two divisions and c- first try to substantiate whatever was in the first part and second then go with the second part which is the measures taken by Uh, government of india to tackle this threat there we saw the measures taken by government of india to conflict resolutions in jammu and kashmir now 
డ్రోన్ అన్మాన్డ్ ఏరియల్ వెహికల్స్ సో దీస్ థింగ్స్ ఆర్ సొఫెస్టికేటెడ్ డివైసెస్ సో ఇర్ రెస్పెక్టివ్ ఆఫ్ దేర్ దేర్ అడ్వాంటేజ్ ఆల్ దీస్ థింగ్స్ బట్ డ్యూ టు ద హై అండ్ టెక్నాలజీస్ దీస్ థింగ్స్ ఆఫ్ ద కోవర్ట్ నేచర్ ఆఫ్ దెమ్ దీస్ థింగ్స్ స్టిల్ ఇట్ పోసెస్ అ సీరియస్ థ్రెట్ టు ఇంటర్నల్ సెక్యూరిటీ యాజ్ వెల్ యాజ్ ద క్రిటికల్ ఇన్ఫ్రాస్ట్రక్చర్స్ దిస్ క్యాన్ వన్ బి వన్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ఇంట్రొడక్షన్స్ ఈవెన్ దో యూ డోంట్ హ్యావ్ టు గో ఇన్ టు ఎనీ సార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్యాక్స్ యూ క్యాన్ డిఫైన్ find uh, what is uav itself and how it is posing a threat to the internal security or the security apparatus itself so uh, first we will see what all the security threats how you, uh, uavs with respect to india how our adversaries are uh, especially china and pakistan are engaging to cause this threat first is obviously surveillance right so they can do cross border surveillance of our critical infrastructures critical infrastructures and military military posts deployments and our in, uh, military uh, setups whatever we have done so through this it is very clandestine for the for us to exactly notice them also so this is one of the major threat where, which with which they can uh try to engage in the uh spying right surveillance second is surveillance and spying second is smuggling so smuggling of arms and also drugs see when it comes to arms and drugs especially pakistan uh, you have if you would have seen the movie urta punjab they would have done this so smuggling and uh, uh, smuggling of arms and drugs is one of the major things which they try to uh, directly inflict damage to indian society as a whole through drugs and arms through directly inflict damage to it okay so this is one of the reason after this we have smuggling then we have our direct threat to direct threat threat direct threat through cutting off cutting off critical infrastructure critical infrastructures like communication networks communication networks and electricity electricity see this also they can do okay they do actually in 2022 they done this work also trying to engage with the uh, uh, trying to directly cut off the lines which is uh, which are essentially for meant for security purpose so through this drone also they will try to uh, through try to demolish the uh, infrastructure which is present here then we have so disrupting of then we have the psychological warfare what is psychological warfare psychological warfare is trying to create a sense of panic so sort of uh, flying closely towards the civilian population so these things what they will do they'll think it is sort of some army is trying to trying to harass the people so through these things also they can uh, directly cause a sense of threat to the internal security so these are the major things which we can which they uh, generally cause uh, some sort of Uh, you know some sort of uh, the uh, and through this spying also they can develop maps also okay for maps this also they do so these are the major things which we they do and now we will do, this is the first part of questions so this four point is more than sufficient because uh, with this you the, the examiner comes to understand tries to understand that definitely you have got the question and you have substantiated the first part of the question now we will speak about the steps taken by the indian government to curtail this threat the first step is counter drone defense org set up in 2021 set up in the 2021 to develop uav technologies to critical technologies so that we can be uh, develop we can be advanced in the area of such uav technologies also this has been the recent organization which has been set up by the government of india Neke, second we know the drdo also develops some uh, certain drones you know about the rustam right 
which is uh, DRDO. Then we know we have the Nishant, which has indigenously prepared UAVs for counter offensive actions. So these are the measures which are then then we have certain developments in the defense also counter drone technologies, counter drone technologies which we develop so these type of uh, technologies will uh, try to uh, try to jam using the uh, some you know these type of technologies they they try to uh, they are against they are a defensive force so these counter drone technologies like kinetic interceptors kinetic interceptors they we build interceptors then we have the jamming vehicles jamming using this we will be able to jam the uh, the functioning of the uav okay so these are two through two technologies where uh, counter drone technologies have been built by the government of india then we have the dgca guidelines everyone should be knowing about it dgca director general of civil aviations 2020 and recently 2020 is also 22 is also out where we have certain zones called red zones which are no fly zones in this no fly zones we try to we have put restrictions on the owners of UAVs that even micro drones should not be flown over such areas. So all sort of regulations have been employed by the government of India to uh, use the, such uh, in critical areas. We, we have some uh, areas called no fly zones. This this process is called the digital sky. No digital sky. If you go to the website, it is fully there. What all the regulations you should be uh, done through registering uh, your drones and all these sort of regulations have been brought. Then we have awareness campaigns, awareness campaigns brought in by the government of India for for the aerial threats. So what sort of aerial threats we uh, is being associated with certain uh, drones and all these things. So because all these uh, things are very sensitive informations which can be extracted. So all these uh, through all these initiatives the government has uh, taken uh, to, cur to curb the threats which arise out of drone technologies. So these are five points which government of India ta has taken domestically which you can mention. Apart from this there are some international measures also. International measures also uh, the government has taken uh, so that uh, it needs some international uh, collaborations also because newer technologies, technology transfer is also there uh, one component. India, US, India, US has signed an MOU in 2021 to counter drone technology organization has signed an MOU with US so that we will get all these uh, technologies, this latest uh, technologies from US uh, so that we can also build our own technology when it comes to uh, drones. Then we have Israel. When you see Israel, obviously we, it's been a long term uh, connection with uh, Israel when it comes to technology transfer. We have this Heron. Heron PL. Drone technology again we are uh, we will be trying to share this data from israel this is again one of the uh, major uh, breakthrough when it comes to drone technology in international collaborations of india then we have with france with france we have mou MOU with France we have made uh, many uh, uh, between this uh, france we have a lot of agreements especially we have in cyber warfare cyber warfare then we have in critical technologies which also include critical technologies and also drone technology so these are some of the international steps we are uh, taken to collaborate with the other uh, like minded countries so that to curb the threat which is arising out of uh, uh, arising out of drone technology and uh, unmanned aerial vehicles so these are the major highlights you can give a good summary or also you can tell any other way forward how in the conclusion so that how drone technologies which which will again uh, be a pose a serious threat and what all the measures which government has taken this can be summarized and given as a good conclusion when it comes to the second question now we'll go to the third question
So the third question is, what are the internal security challenges being faced by India? Give our role of central intelligence and investigative agencies starts to counter our threats. So this is a pretty direct question. Now we will discuss about the third question. It's a 15 mark question, though it's a very static question. Uh, we will be uh, discussing right now what are the measures being taken, right, for these internal security threats. So when it comes to internal security, uh, when it comes to internal security uh, threat to India, it has been more, more traditional as well as modern. Okay. So uh, the question is, as we see, the question has been again two, two parts. It's a 15 mark question. So you have to write in an elaborate way. You can start the question with some facts. Say for example, there have been almost 500 million cyber attacks which have been done uh, in India last one year alone. So this is again a, a latest report by InSafe. There is an in, uh, internet review organization. So you can start with that uh, modern context also. Otherwise some traditional uh, security threat which has been uh, present to India from all the dimensions. So that uh, uh, it, through that way also you can give one uh, kind of uh, introduction for this topic. So what are the internal security challenges being faced by India which is the first part of question and then the role of central intelligence and investigative agencies tasked to counter our threats. So this is the uh, two parts of the question. Now we will go to the first part of the question. So what are the internal security challenges? So first major challenge due to internal security is terrorism okay terrorism see organizations like jaish e mohammed jaish e mohammed the indian mujahideen the indian mujahideen the laskari taiba see these organizations are still active and they are uh, they are posing on serious internal security threat to india so these type of uh, terrorist outfits which is being one of the conventional threat to india then we have insurgencies so insurgencies are terrorist outfits which are trying to present in India as well as some bordering countries and trying to pose a threat. So the first one of the major insurgent agencies like Naxals in West Bengal, in Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, the Red Corridor you know, that we would have read. Then we have the Northeast insurgencies. So these are... The Ulfa was there, but still, uh, we have a lot of organizations which is uh, the independent and the demanding uh, independent statehood, uh, independent state itself. Say, for example, the Nagalim, such type of demands also is again one of the internal security threat. Then we have communal violence. See, in communal violence due to fake news, fake news, the recent new violence due to you know uh, due to religious outfits then we have the Delhi riots the Delhi riots then we have you know cow vigilantism due to vigilantism so any type of uh, these things uh, definitely what happens these are posing one of a serious threat and also in Manipur recent northeast again yes so much of fake news has also been uh, circulated. So all these things are one of the major uh, uh, poses which pose a major threat to Indian, uh, in, uh, Indian internal security. Then we have the left wing extremism. Again, we spoke about Naxalism, Maoism, Naxalism, Maoism as an ideology. We have for this we have support of even uh, based from China cross border support is also there for such type of organizations for supplying them arms and all these things. So this thing is one of the major internal security threat. Then we have cyber attacks. Again a modern threat. Cyber attacks. What are the cyber attacks? Say Petaya was there. Right. Then we have Wanna cry was there. Wanna cry. One of a major security threat. And as I said, there are more than 500 million, 500 million cyber attacks in last one year alone, according to InSafe. And then we have uh, Operation Site Copy, which was done, which was a major uh, 
if you would have seen it's some major uh, security breach which happened to the indian defense forces or in uh, operation side copy then there were more than 7 million uh, inter- indian railways was getting uh, uh, data of indian railways when was been put on sale in the dark net that was also one security breach so uh, see almost all the statements i am backing with certain examples that's how you should write an answer unless until you give an example then it becomes a more generic content if you start explaining what is terrorism is so try to back up your content with the examples if you go through all the answers i have tried to give maximum examples for it okay then cyber warfare then we'll go to the next we have communal violence we have spoken about cyber warfare we have spoken about then uh, we have this foreign intelligent agents foreign agencies foreign agencies or foreign state sponsored state agencies not only agencies and even states which are trying to influence say for example uh, pakistan pakistan we have uh, terror finding from pakistan to uh, certain uh, you know outfits which are working in indian the indian mujahideen the pok affected areas all are getting financed from pakistan yes then we have china which is again supporting naxal groups maoist groups and also uh, the northeast groups which are trying to pose a threat to india's internal security then we have social media which is again see what happened in manipur again fake news in social media fake news then youth are getting radicalization radicalization through fake media what happened in punjab recently no radicalization of youth is getting takes place recruitment in is was again social media was used islamic state from kerala and other regions there were recruitment happening in uh, through social media so these are the main threats which has been uh, in which you can be discussed and everything is backed by some sort of examples so this is how you back the questions with examples now we'll see what are the steps taken by the indian government steps taken by the central intelligence agencies and other agencies hmm? other agencies central security forces for curbing the internal security threat first is nia national investigation agency it was established in 2008 after the 911 i mean sorry 2611 mumbai attack mumbai attack it has entire freedom to arrest and prosecute and prosecute cases related to terrorism and terror financing across india unlike cbi this it is doesn't need to ask for any permission from any state so it has free hand to work then we have ib intelligence bureau and ra so these are agencies external and internal intelligence agencies which work to for the which works are to work to the for the safer uh, security situations in india they they also coordinate with the state forces to to provide better uh, uh, intelligence in, intelligence inputs so, so that to curb the security threats then we have also we have drdos central technical research central technical research organization which works under the directly under our national security advisor central technical research organization then we have other organizations like cbi it's again a central wing organization though it has to take the state support but still it is again it it coordinates with all when it comes to terrorism and terror financing related cases it can definitely give inputs and nia obviously takes care uh, but still this is one of the central intelligence organization then we have financial intelligence unit financial intelligence unit which works for the uh, for financial bulk transactions which happens place so this financial intelligence unit under the ministry it works for it 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 basically what it does uh, any sort of bulk uh, hawala type transactions is it has been put under the radar okay then we have nat grid 
कोर्स नाट ग्रेड शुड ब्रिंग इन टू एक्शन बट स्टिल नाट ग्रेड इज देर इट ऑलमोस्ट गिवस अ यूनिफाइड डेटा ऑफ ऑल द डीटेल्स अबाउट वन पर्सन इफ ईज अंडर रेड आर एवरी इंफर्मेशन अबाउट हिम विल बी अंडर दिस नाट ग्रिड सो ऑलमोस्ट फ्रॉम ऑल द सिक्योरिटी एजेंसीज अक्रॉस द स्टेट जुडिशियल प्रोसेस बैंक अकाउंट एवरी थिंग विल बी देर सो नाट ग्रिड इज वन ऑफ वन ऑफ अ काइंड ऑफ इनिशिएटिव विच विल डेफिनेटली बेनिफिट ऑल बेनिफिट द सिक्योरिटी सिचुएशन इन इंडिया अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस वॉट ऑल लीगल मेशर्स वी हैव टेकन we have taken the uapa unlawful prevention of activities act then we have pota is there prevention of terrorism act then we have pmla prevention of money laundering act so these are like you should you should not wait we should uh, write it in a flow see these are the uh, 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 legal uh, provisions then we have money laundering act is there uapa is there then uh, apart from that we have international cooperations right international we central intelligence agencies they coordinate with the interpol right they coordinate with un agencies in terrorism related activities in intelligence sharing right we have the fatf right to grey list any type of counter uh, terrorist financing is there so to threat to the situation so these are some of the major measures which are taken by the internal security this can be one of the main points which you can keep elaborating what all their forces what i mean what all their uh, uh, their work has been done to uh, to increase the security situation so first we have seen what are the main conventional threats two parts of the questions and then we have literally almost written more than uh, here 6 9 and we have 12 points we have written for the uh, what are the steps taken uh, we can keep elaborating under these points and also i have given examples for all the uh, situations which have uh, which have caused threat to the india okay now we will go to the next question so this is the last question uh, it is also a pretty direct question but still this uh, the second part is really you know that should be really remote for a lot of people but still if uh, one could have been little more smarter how to engage with that they would have done i'll tell you how to engage with it but yes let first let go for first we'll read the main question give our give out the major sources of terror funding in india and the efforts being made to curtail these sources in the light of this also discuss the aim and objective of the no money for terror conference recently at held at new delhi in november 2022 so they are asking the first part of questions what are the major sources of terror financing I mean, terror financing so in this terror financing what happens is uh, the the again the the process is complex but still we have certain sources from where this outfits get the uh, financing and funding from and after that they are asking specifically about one uh, conference which is like no money for terror conference and i i believe uh, it it is highly impossible for a person to remove mostly remember these things but still we will uh, for a for a solution point of view we will still give uh, but uh, speaking about uh, if one doesn't have an uh, complete idea also i'll tell how to uh, how to approach this question when such remote questions have also been asked yes so according to the international international convention on suppression suppression of financing of terrorism terrorism 1999 terrorism financing terrorism financing is a is a means and methods how a uh, certain uh, is a means and methods how terrorists finance their activity to instill fear in the civilian population so this is one sort of definition which uh, was employed by the international convention on terror suppression for terrorism and financing in 1999 so this can be a good sort of introduction when it comes to uh, this topic because this is mainly speaking about terror funding you can define terror funding also you can mention any reports also based on this and second thing the first part of question is what are the major ways through which the terrorists get their finances from so first is hawala transactions so hawala transactions you know what is talans once that hawala money transaction is been transferred embedded it will be very difficult for the traditional banking system to trace it right then we have ngos 
there are certain ngos which will try to support such type of terrorist activities but outwardly they will be uh, protect uh, you know projecting themselves as genuine organizations that's why ministry of home affairs now and then they will try to uh, revise these ngos and bring up certain regulations okay so then we have fake currencies see fake currencies is one of the major threat because fake currencies again it has brought under the prevention of money laundering act and it is also nia can take terrorist action against you if fake currency is there it is a major source of uh, fake currencies in especially in pok bangladesh and nepal fake currency is a major threat how terror is getting financed by going fake indian currency i am meaning in this city in these countries right then we have the illegal arms trade illegal arms trade through which terrorist groups get finances from for funding their terrorist activities then apart from that we have illegal arms trade then we have the drug trafficking drug trafficking drug trafficking as one of the major source of then we have cyber extortion right cyber extortion through loan apps loan apps phishing ransomware ransomware so building these type of these type of cyber extortion mechanisms again the terrorism is getting financed after that we have kidnappings kidnappings and extortion so even at this level terrorism terrorism is again getting financed again foreign sources foreign sources there will be certain people who are who are actually they will be having uh, sympathy towards certain organizations so these type of foreign sources are also major threat again money laundering is there money laundering we spoke about money laundering then we have religious certain religious organizations also fund terrorism okay so these are some 10 points you can keep elaborating on these things which will uh, be the first part of your question which is what are the major sources of terrorism financing in india now we'll see little bit of uh, see though though they have directly jumped to the uh, what are the aims and objectives of conference of no money for terror uh, we can give little bit of legal steps which we have already discussed there which is pmla we have the pota we have uapa then institutional measures like nia ib raw nat grid right fiu financial intelligence unit then we have international cooperations again interpol interpol then fatf g7 g20 also we will speak about terrorism sanctions so again engaging with un organizations for counter terrorism convention on counter terrorism so these things are some broader measures which you can mention if you are lack of points say for example you, if you don't specifically know what are the aims and objectives of uh, specifically asked you can again keep elaborating and give mention some uh, points about based on uh, whatever you already know okay now we'll go for the specific you know that uh, specific counter no this conference which was held by a uh, prime ministerial conference which is no money for terror so what are the specific objectives we will see so preventing diversion from legal financial instruments by fighting anonymity in financial networks this is one of the main aim of, of the a main aim of that conference which is again speaking about terror financing after that restricting the use of proceeds of other crimes for terrorist activities now we mentioned about certain illegal acts like extortion cyber attack through this methods now then preventing the use of new financial technologies virtual assets like cryptocurrencies wallets yes again in uh, in india cryptocurrencies is illegal okay so these things again 
curb the terror out uh, terror financing again in is one of the main uh, aim of this uh, no money for terror conference then we have eliminate of eliminate the use of illegal channels cash couriers hawala by terror outfits this is again uh, what we spoke about one of the traditional way how terrorists get their finances from then prevent the use of non profit organizations npos sector and and spread of terror ideology right now i spoke about the spread, uh, the terror ideology uh, which uh, some people emphasize some people you know they give uh, empathy to such organizations through foreign sources they try to uh, fund through npos and ngos again this is one of the main aim to curb them as well then continuous capacity building for counter terror and financial intelligence agencies of all countries again i spoke about international cooperation see uh, this is what i i told of even if you don't know the answer you can just uh, use the topic say for example uh, no money for terror conference and these are the things which are traditionally we do but we write uh, in it as if it was recommended obviously that will only recommended that that will be the aim of such conferences also so whatever we know only we try to reframe it uh, even if you don't exactly know you will be still be able to try to make a point of that conference what could have literally happened this is how you have to be smart when you write answers you don't uh, every answer suppose you will not be able to make it you will not to be able to know exact what they said but still you can uh, give a decent answer and get a uh, definitely a good score uh, rather than leaving that question right entirely even if you don't know anything then objectives establish a comprehensive monitoring framework involving cooperation coordination and collaboration of all intelligence agencies again this is one of the major drawback uh, which again nat grid will try to solve it in future then the strategy of trace target and terminate to be adopted by low level economic offenses to more organized offenses of course uh, this is one of the major uh, even low level offenses i spoke about kidnapping again this can uh, literally become into uh, major offenses also in tomorrow that's why we have to tar- target trace and terminate in the initial stage itself again strengthening and harmonizing the legal structures related to terror finance again uh, these things are more important for proper execution of and prosecution of terrorism related offenses then developing a robust mechanism against the misuse of next generation technology yes definitely we need uh, uh, of course we have the central technical research wing organization but still we need uh, more such uh, advanced organizations because the threat again uh, through cyber and all these things of course we need we need to have more counter offensive technologies okay counter defensive technologies also and strengthening the legal and regulatory framework for asset recovery of course terror related finances are all also uh, be uh, utilized to buy assets also so this uh, legal measures for this also should be taken this is again a similar point given into a more organized format okay so these are the con- aims and objectives of the no uh, no terror for money conference apart and with this we can give a summarize of whatever we have discussed in terror financing and how india has taken measures all these measures to curb terror financing which can form a good part of your conclusion right so with this i think we have discussed uh, elaborately all the points when it comes to uh, even for 10 marks we have discussed a lot of points examples when it comes to uh, the internal security section of uh, mains 2023 and i will uh, uh, take a leave from you until we meet them meet you from the next session okay thank you guys